Howdy folks. Uh, I'm going to read you a little something from this book called From the Top. And it is about roosters. It's called Cockadoodle Ego. I had a little run-in with our rooster again. We've just got the one rooster. It's him and about 59 hens, so I figure he's either plum happy or plum tuckered or both. Actually, I'm pretty sure he's not happy because roosters just don't ever seem very happy. They're so busy strutting and fluffing and crowing and stomping around and generally doing everything they can to let you know they're the big boss man, while simultaneously trying to subjugate every hen within three square miles, that they never really seem to let their feathers down and just hang out. The thing about a rooster is, if you're a man, sometimes when you're out there throwing cracked corn and you see the way that ridiculous bird sticks his feathered chest out and tries to stand taller than he is, especially when he just rears back and crows at nothing, this uncomfortable self-recognition thing happens. I mean, I've hit that stage in life where I've settled into a relatively mellow groove, and I'm certainly not looking for a fight. And yet sometimes I watch that rooster and, and recognize I'm not completely cured of the strut and cock a doodle -doo. When I was a kid, we had a big white rooster. He used to home in on my sister like a heat-seeking beak missile. And she was forever screeching through the yard at 60 mile an hour, that rooster flapping and pecking all around her. Sometimes when we thought she needed a rest, my brother John and I would tackle him and then we'd hypnotize him. The most artistic means of accomplishing this was to put him on the ground with his neck stretched, then draw a line repeatedly from his comb down his beak and about six inches straight out into the dirt. We'd do that a dozen times, then back slowly away, and that rooster would just sit there, beached on his breast and blinking like he just crawled out of a mile-long mile mine shaft. Generally, if you didn't disturb him, he'd be out of commission for a good five or ten minutes. Then pretty soon you'd hear a howl and a cackle, and that bird and my sister would be doing the Daytona 500 around the chicken coop again. Sometimes, for variety, I'd peel the rooster off my sister's left calf and haul him up to the ladder, clear up to the top of the feed bin, where I'd stand on the bin cap, tuck his head beneath one wing, rotate him in a circle, and pitch him into the air like a football. He'd usually be about ten feet off the ground before his head popped out and he got to windmilling. He was never injured, although he may have scuffed his beak, and furthermore, this did nothing to deter him from attacking my sister. But for purposes of safety and so that I don't get angry letters, I cannot in good conscience recommend this to the subsequent generations. All in all, I am not a fan of male chickens. That said, I do like to hear a rooster crow in the morning, twice, and I wish they'd give it a rest. If you've ever had roosters, you know they crow at sunrise, they crow at moonrise, they crow at each other, they crow at the reflection in the coop window, they crow as soon as you turn your back to leave the chicken run, they just crow, crow, crow. Sometimes I crow back. And I stomp towards the rooster and keep crowing until he runs behind the coop. And then I look at the hands and stick my chest out a little bit and bounce my shoulders like I'm fluffing my feathers and... Sure enough, right about then, that rooster sticks his head around the corner of the coop and crows again, and as I whirl to march back at him, I suddenly realize it is not the rooster who has the problem here. See you later. Take care of each other. That's my head. <laughs> Shiny. Gotta get back to wearing the cap.